This is DuckTales for Game Boy. Oh man, so this is uh, a game in a series that I absolutely adore. The DuckTales games. So I grew up with the NES game. And uh, like uh, we got it when it came out. And it was easily one of my favorite, uh, my favorite NES games. My favorite video games to play growing up. Um, n not only... So I've played this game for the NES, the original... Uh, countless times, literally countless times. Oh my gosh. Uh, I consider it one of the best games ever made. And the way I qualify that is if I have free time and I just want to play a game, I will actively choose to play DuckTales for NES. It's that good. Like, I'll go out of my way to actually play this game. Um... What else? Uh, in more recent years, there was the DuckTales Remastered uh, version that came out, made by one of my favorite video game studios, uh, WayForward Technologies, and I think that's an outstanding version as well. They added a ton of extra story and stuff in uh, that version. It, what is it? It makes it feel like you're... Oh, and they added every... Uh, all the voice actors from the original came back to record dialogue. Uh, and for someone who... As someone who grew up with the TV show and the game um, in my childhood, uh, it was so fun to hear all those voices again. So I really like the remastered version as well. Um, so I loved the original NES version. I really enjoyed the remastered version. And so I decided to pick up the Game Boy version because, well, I've gone all this time. I love the Game Boy and I've gone all this time without playing the Game Boy version. I should try it out. Uh, unfortunately, this game has a lot of problems with it, and right here is one of the first times it really shows up. Um, all I want to do is bounce on this guy's head to get to the... Uh, I gotta bounce on the ice block up in the air, and I just can't get it. Can I... <laughs> Every time I bounce on his head... I get hurt and I don't even bounce up. It's not like I get hurt and then I get up there. No, I just I just get hurt every single time and like the guy's just bouncing there. <laughs> I don't know. Is it glitching? Is he supposed to be doing that? Is he supposed to be walking back and forth? I don't even know. But it's it's a it's a, a good example of what's to come. This game has uh, I don't want to be mean to the developers. I think it's... Uh, oh, man. But, yeah. I, I gotta say, I think this is one of the most poorly implemented games on the original Game Boy. Which is a shame, because I know how fun the game is, because I have the NES version, and one of, I consider it one of the best games of all time. But this Game Boy game, the Game Boy version is... Uh, yeah, really lacking in the... Oh, how do I put it? Uh, I guess that's the programming. Um, and we'll see more glitches uh, to come. More little quirks, more little glitches. Uh, another thing that NC popped out, so to me, is... Uh, what is it? The, um, the music. The music in the original NES version is some of my favorite uh, chiptune music of all time. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty notable. I don't think it's uncommon to, to find, uh, the music from DuckTales on the NES, uh, on many people's list of favorite chiptune music. Um, but the Game Boy version is, uh, really watered down. Oh, here's the first boss. Oh my gosh. So I can't quite tell. It looks like... It looks like the boss is either lagging or or like skipping frames or something and this is something else i saw oh my gosh it's such a water down the boss fight in the nes version is is quite intense and there's like all these snowballs falling down and this one there's like three <laughs> but whatever um it's another example of something that's kind of weird in this game the, uh, the way the enemies move uh is quite jerky that's the word quite it's, i can't tell if it's slow down or just being jerky and i don't know why my guess is that it almost looks like instead of implementing physics, they kind of 
hard-coded the trajectory of some of the enemies. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, back to the music. Oh, and you know, the moon, I'm on the moon now. And the moon theme is one of the most famous pieces of chiptune music. It's a great song. Not my favorite song in the original game, but yeah, it's just, this is such a bad version of it. Oh my gosh, so here I go. I mean, all I want to do is grab this, this rope <laughs> to climb up into the ship. And I can't even grab it. Apparent, I don't, I don't know why. Oh my gosh. That's another example of this game yeah, feeling just a little bit off. It's so hard to grab this vine, this rope. Uh, I know I miss it at least one more time. Ugh. Um, oh, but yeah, so uh, the music. Uh, this is a good example. This, this stage. I mean, every stage is a good example of uh, the music. It's from, it's the NES version of the music, but it's just so poorly implemented on the Game Boy, which is a shame because in general, I consider the Game Boy to have, uh, how do I put it? I prefer the sound output on the Game Boy. I think the, whether it's the speaker, I, have, I haven't quite figured out if it's the speaker I prefer or it's just the, the audio that's generated. The, in general, the music that can be produced on the Game Boy, in my opinion, sounds better than the music uh, that can be produced on the NES. Oh my gosh, I just kind of glitched into the wall there. I don't know why. All throughout this level, I'm like, so there's spikes. Oh yeah, so there's these spike things. And if I hit them, you know, I get injured. <laughs> Except sometimes not, apparently. <laughs> like, okay, so sorry. So I know when you poke, what is this guy doing here? Oh my gosh. You need a new hobby, buddy. That's better. Where is it? So, you know, of course, the idea is, I know from the original, if you pogo on these spikes, then you do not get injured. Uh, the idea is, right, you're supposed to pogo on them uh, to avoid getting hurt. Uh, but the, uh, <laughs> in this game, there'll be random times where I'm pogoing and I'll get hurt. Like, I'll just brush the edge and get hurt, even though I'm pogoing. And then there's other times where, oh, there's other times where, like, I'll be just standing on the edge of the spike, and I guess it doesn't hurt me if I stand on the edge. It just feels so glitchy and so so wrong, like little mistakes like that. Ouch. Why did I get hurt there? <laughs> All right, we've got this. <laughs> we got a breakable block here, and I don't know why you can't fit through there. It's kind of random. <sighs> All right, so yeah, unfortunately the music is not as good as the NES. I had such high hopes too. Uh, and, the, <laughs> and since I was talking about the DuckTales remastered version, um, yeah, I mean, the remixes, you know, they're all, how do I put it? It's, you know, CD, CD quality recordings in the remastered version that are all excellent. Uh, they did a really good job with the remastered version that came out much later of the music. Uh, but yeah, this game is really, really lacking. Um, oh my gosh, these blocks. <laughs> so they start moving down when you stand on them. It's actually not when you stand on them. It's just when you're vertically lined up, which is fine. It's just, I can't imagine that that is what the intended behavior would be. How are you supposed to get this? This made me so angry. So it won't appear until you like brush past it, which means you can't just hang out on the vine. And then once it's there, how are you supposed to get it? I don't know. Ugh. I think I tried getting it once and I just failed. I don't know. Maybe I can figure it out later. But whatever, it's another thing that makes the level design of this feel sloppy. All right, so I've talked a lot about the crappiness or what's wrong in this game. But there is some uh, some stuff I really appreciate. First of all, this is one of my favorite portable, um, I'm sorry, this is one of my favorite video games of all time. And now it's portable. That's pretty cool. I appreciate having DuckTales on the go. Uh, and for that reason, <laughs> I'd love to, uh, you know, pick it up again. I don't plan on just leaving this uh, and never playing it again, even despite all its quirks. It's DuckTales, and I love this game series. Uh, also, another thing this game does really well is um, 
as someone who played the NES version to death, like, oh my gosh, I played it so many times, I really appreciate that this game is not a direct remake. It's not a direct port. Uh, instead, so it has all the same level types, it has all the same level enemies, but it, uh, the level designs look familiar, but they are not the same levels. They are all new levels, and to the point where, like, I get really, really lost. As someone who has the first game memorized, I was so lost in this game. I actually used my, like, Nintendo Power to look up some tips to figure out how to get through it. That's kind of fun. On to Transylvania. And I like it. I, like, I don't even have uh, this version of the game memorized yet. I'm excited to play through it more and actually learn more about it, figure out where more secrets are. Uh, oh, another thing. So that's, uh, I talked about having DuckTales portable. I talked about um, how the game has new levels, uh, you know, new level design, which is really nice. Uh, another thing that's really good about this, I really appreciate about, appreciate about this game is the way they implemented the pogo jump. So the primary, uh, the primary uh, attack in this game, the primary move, the main move you'll be doing other than jumping, is the pogo jump, which I will talk about in a minute. So check this out, because uh, this is the part in the game. Oh my gosh, this might be the glitchiest part in the game. So I got these mine carts up here, and I know how they're supposed to work, because in the NES game, you ride in them, you duck down when you need to duck, and then when you're about to fall in the pit, you jump out. So in this recording, it shows me jumping out and landing on the edge. <laughs> I had to do this literally 12 times to get it, you know, using like save states. I did this literally 12 times because jumping out of the minecart is so glitchy. Oh, I was getting so angry. Every time I tried to jump out, I would just die. I would just fall into the pit every single time. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, it, you know, in the original NES version, it just feels natural the way you get to the end of the minecart ride and you press the A button to jump and you jump out of the minecart and land on the ledge next to it. It's not a big deal. In this game, I I still haven't quite figured it out. It, I, I don't know how the developers ever uh, actually made it out of the minecart. There must be something I'm missing because it's that bad. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, in my opinion, you have to do, after learning this, you have to do this stage first because the minecart section is only, what is it? It's only, uh, I don't know, a minute into the, the, the level. And if you, it's so, I mean, I will just die repeatedly trying to get over that minecart. And if you die three times, well, that's it, your game's over. So that's that. Uh, so you may even need to do this stage first just to make sure you can get by that one horrible, horrible section. I don't know what's up with that section or yeah, how it's supposed to work. All right, anyway, the pogo jump in this game. Oh, there's another example of enemies just looking glitchy. Like the way he, the ghost moves up and down it's so, yeah, jagged or something. Um, I love Magicka Dispel so much. What a great character and a great voice. Ah. All right. Uh, as I was saying, another thing this game gets right is the pogo jump. So in the original game, the way, on the NES, the way you do the pogo jump is you jump into the air you then hold the down arrow, and then you hold the B button, and then he'll start pogoing. And at that point, you can let go of the down arrow, and just con as long as you're continuing holding the B button, you'll continue to pogo. <laughs> uh, if you're like me, uh, you might think this is needlessly complex, and apparently so did the developers as well. Uh, in DuckTales 2 for the NES, uh, they realized that holding the down button is completely unnecessary, and as long as you're in the air, you can just press the B button to start pogoing. No need to hold the down arrow. And I didn't realize they already implemented that in this in this Game Boy version. So in the Game Boy, in the NES version, uh, needlessly complex pogo mechanic. In the Game Boy version, they simplified it the way it probably should have been in the original. You just hold the B button to pogo. It's nice. Oh my god. I think getting the key for the mines is even easier and more simple in the Game Boy version than it is in the very simple NES version. Oh well. Kind of funny. 
onto the mines. Oh, this is a good example of a new layout that really confused me. Um, I had to, this one I definitely had to look at the maps in my, uh, in my book to figure out where to go. So the first time I played this, when I was just, you know, doinking around, playing around with the Game Boy version, see what it was like, I tried to go through the mines and <laughs> I got, that was it, I got lost, I couldn't get anywhere. And so I decided right off the bat, I'm going to, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> are you supposed to get that? <laughs> I decided to use the map so I wouldn't get too lost. Uh, um, a fourth thing that this game gets right is the graphics. So the Game Boy has a lower resolution than the NES, and so which means they had to scale down the sprites, and they look wonderful. Scrooge McDuck, whether he's on a dark background or a light background, stands out. Um, the backgrounds in the stages are nicely themed for the stage. They're not boring white or blank or anything. They look, this game looks really nice. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, this game really looks really nice. Wow. Um, oh, i got to jump over these stupid guys. Um, oh, I guess also uh, just at the top of the screen there, uh, just underneath the score box, you know, underneath the time, uh, the word time, uh, you can see the little graphical glitches. And now I did some Game Boy programming, and I think what's going on here, what is going on there? It looks like the developers, let me watch it scroll a little bit. It looks like the developers used an interrupt is my best guess to like draw the top part of the screen. So for every frame, 60 frames per second, they draw the, the, the score box at the top of the screen and then they pause the drawing and start drawing all the uh, the graphics on the bottom half of the screen, which doesn't make sense to me. Actually, let me look, let me look that up. All right, I just loaded it up in, a, uh, in an emulator and check it out the, uh, the video RAM and I was wrong. Um, <laughs> as expected, oh, I'm sorry. So I was wrong in my, the way I guessed how it was being uh, implemented. The score box on the top of the screen is the second window, like the second background it's called. Background layer two, background one. Uh, so there's two background layers. Uh, the second one's called the window. That's being implemented to the window, which doesn't surprise me because that's how, that's what it's there for. Kind of have a, a, a score on the screen at all times. That's a great idea. What I don't understand is why those graphical glitches are there. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I can see it flickering right now in the top right corner. Um, <laughs> one thing that... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, to answer my own question, I don't know. I don't know why there's a graphical glitch on the screen at all times um, where the the window meets up with the background layer. Uh one thing that uh, surprised me by loading this up, in, by looking at the video memory, is that they actually draw. The the developers or the game is actually drawing the rest of the level up above, underneath the score, <laughs> like the top of the trees, the top of the vines. They're all being drawn up there. Uh, you'll never ever see them because this game doesn't have any vertical scrolling. I mean, sure, you go up a like up a window when you go up a vine, but there's no up and down scrolling, like live scrolling. So I don't know. <laughs> oh man, we're coming up to one of my favorite spots of uh, <laughs> of uh, bugginess in this game, glitchiness in this game. So in the original, there's a clever section where you have to uh, launch pad. The, the spot is too 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 wide to cross. So Launchpad McQuack appears in his helicopter and he gives you a lift. And wow, I, I guess the developers insisted this scene has to, absolutely has to 100% be in this Game Boy version. But oh man, does it chug. It is so hard to get by this area. At least there's no bees flying by. In the NES version, you have to deal with the bees as you're trying to cross. And it's horrible. Like, couldn't they just added another plant there to jump over? I don't know. Seems a little unnecessary. Gotta have the, the helicopter sequence. Hey, there's launch pad. How'd you get over here? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, though, buddy. Wah. 
All right. <sighs> All right, so we talked about more of the stuff I really like about this game. What? <laughs> I guess it's kind of a shortcut, not shortcut. I don't know. <sighs> I mean, DuckTales, the, uh, DuckTales, the cartoon show, the original cartoon show, uh, it was one of my favorites growing up as well. I don't know if you've watched it growing up or if you've watched it recently, but yeah, it still it still holds up really well in my opinion. That's kind of funny. I think it's kind of funny. So uh, back in the, I, I love talking about animation and cartoons. I guess uh, so. Back in the '70s and '80s, uh, cartoons for kids were just in a terrible state. So we had toy companies, major toy companies, producing these cartoon shows. Okay, you know, they're there to sell toys, and it worked. Um, I don't blame them. Uh, the cartoons they were pumping out was just the most boring, mediocre, often ugly animation. It is just uh, repetitive, uh, you know, a character on the screen in the same pose, and, uh, you know, the, maybe the mouths are moving barely, maybe a little motion in the head, and that was most of the scenes so ugly just boring animation ugly boring animation and then i guess in the uh, late 80s disney says all right guys what if we make a new cartoon show but this time we put we really like put an effort <laughs> so they spent a bunch of money and so we've got uh beautiful animation uh we've got uh, fully full music uh in the background fully scored soundtrack and uh a soundtrack whatever it's yeah soundtrack in the show it's just really nice and that quality really shows in most of the episodes of course there are some episodes that are just lame i hated when they uh they introduce the new special characters oh gosh you have to do these stupid mine carts again oh so bad i gotta figure out how to do these um well yeah and then they introduce like the uh the little friends of the kids. I like the kids in the show, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and uh, Webigail, Webby, the little girl. They're all great. Uh, they introduce some other kids in the show. Uh, there's Bubba the Caveman. There's, I don't know, one of their junior woodchuck friends. I can't remember his name. It's just so annoying. <laughs> oh, well. But yeah, in general, I think the show really holds up. Oh my gosh, there's another thing this game gets right. Oh, come on. I finally remember to go to the left or right. In this version of the stage, the final stage doesn't have those secrets there. Gosh darn it. Anyway, um, another thing this game gets right is the box art. The box art for this game is different from the NES version, and it is it is beautiful. It is so nice. Like, I just want to make it my desktop wallpaper. It is a perfect example of let's go on an adventure. It looks like let's go on an adventure in a drawing. It's gorgeous. I love the box art for this game. Um, oh, so we didn't talk about DuckTales 2. Um, so DuckTales 2 came out for the NES. Uh, there is also a Game Boy port of DuckTales 2, which I'll talk about at a later time. I haven't really played, di dived into that one yet. Uh, but that, that, that game, DuckTales 2 for Game Boy, was programmed by a different studio than this game, and the quality and the audio is just top-notch in that game. Um... So there's no problem there going forward. Uh, but yeah, for this game, um, with the uh, we've got the uh, lower lower quality audio. There's the uh, the odd glitches um, with control play control, the clunky collision detection is it just really really adds up to a pretty pretty poor gaming experience and the most frustrating thing is this game is a port which which means i know what the game could have been it could have been the nes version portable but all the glitches and uh sloppiness in the in the programming and in the, in the game really really hinders it which is unfortunate uh, do I recommend this game? Oh, I, I still I still really like it. I still plan on playing it, but um, I don't think it's worth playing. Like, if you had any game to play, <laughs> I 
Like, I'll still go back. I want to play. I want to play the uh, the NES version, the Game Boy version. I don't find myself wanting to play, replay it, or replay it, um, except for the fact that if I'm out and about, and I don't, you know, I'm not home with the NES with the original game. I would want to play it because it feels close enough to the NES version. <laughs> like I would just be playing it to play something like the NES version, uh, but portable. It's an outstanding game hindered by a poor implementation, which is a shame because we know how good it could have been. Yeah. So that's DuckTales for Game Boy.